Now the further co corroboration for the hypothesis that these six stones are the belt and shoulders and head stars of Orion uh, at the times indicated by the rest of the calendar circle comes from the rest of the Naphtha Playa site where you have these long baseline megalith alignments. So like we're here north looking south. The calendar circle is actually in a complex of large megalithic stones that are on astronaut actually stellar aligned uh, a sequence of stellar aligned uh, megalithic alignments south of the calendar circle and you had six lines of megaliths three northerly lines and three southerly lines the distance from the center of those megaliths was roughly around uh, a thousand meters varying from a few hundred to about eleven hundred meters and the calendar circle is essentially in that complex at Nabta Playa. And those uh, long baseline megaliths, it turns out, point to the same six stars at the same time in a repeated way and very specific way that corroborates that this is probably the meaning of, of these, these stars here. Okay, you see the guy with the reflector light down the beach about 800 meters that demonstrates the distances involved in the long baseline megalith alignments that point to stars right next to uh, the calendar circle at Nabta Playa. Okay, on the beach we demonstrated the distances involved in the megaliths, lines of megaliths near the calendar circle <coughs> at Nabta Playa. And uh, I noted that they point to stars, and the stars they point to are the six, same six stars that are uh, designated in the diagram, the star viewing diagram in the center of the calendar circle. And these six lines, I first looked at them uh, in comparison to the six stars in the star viewing diagram at 6300 BC, just after the start of applicability of the star viewing diagram. And I found that they're rather close. Some of them uh, uh, align at that time, and all six of the lines are are close, um, but they're they're a little bit off. So when I saw that they were close, I I, uh, I thought, oh, that that could uh, verify that my my uh, interpretation of the star viewing diagram of the calendar circle was right. That those are the six stars in, uh, designated. Uh, if only they had all aligned at exactly the same time I thought they would have proven my case that those six uh, uh, stones in the diagram were, were those stars. Uh, so I thought, oh, too bad. They're not all at exactly the same date. Then I looked a little bit closer, though, at uh, what was going on as astronomically because they were fairly close to the six lines. And uh, I found that they are uh, uh, all around that time, close to what's called uh, heli heliacal rising, vernal equinox heliacal rising. Uh, what, what vernal equinox heliacal rising is, it just it means that on the first day of spring, a star rises together over the horizon with the sun. So I found that those six stars were all somewhere, you know, not too far from vernal equinox heliacal rising uh, at that time. So then I looked at I uh, considered that that might be uh, uh, the, the meaning of the long baseline alignments. So I looked at each one in sequence, its uh, actual date of vernal equinox heliacal rising, and found that each one of the six stars designated in the calendar circle diagram align with one of the megalith alignments on its vernal equinox heliacal rising date.
so that given, finding out that that is the meaning of those, uh, uh, this megalithic complex with such, uh, with such high likelihood uh, led me to keep uh, uh, studying what else might be meant by the, di the, the megalithic uh, uh, structures. And the next obvious thing to look at is, well, if you look at a diagram of the, of the layout of the megaliths, you first note that, well, there are these very clear lines of megaliths, but they aren't all at a uniform or even a uniformly patterned distance from the central radiating hub. They, they appear uh, uh, not very elegantly placed in that regard as far as distance, even though they're very precisely in lines. So the next obvious question is, well, why, why would these uh, designers of the site have, have made these distances kind of unattractive when they were so elegantly uh, placing the alignments in the other aspects? And it occurred to me to look for, for other meaning for the, the distances to go along with the alignment meanings. And the distances from the central hub, I first looked for the possibility that they might uh, represent the brightness of the stars. Uh, maybe the brightest star, uh, Betelgeuse, would be the closest one or the farthest one as far as represented by the megaliths. But uh, they weren't. It didn't work out that way. Uh, that didn't seem to be the pattern. And I, I considered some other things. And finally, uh, just for fun, I looked up the actual astrophysical distances to those stars. You can find it on the Hipparchos uh, Satellite Observatory website. They're, they're re very recently measured very accurately. and. Uh, I was surprised to find that the actual astrophysical distances uh, are represented by the distances on the ground of the stones in, in each line for its star that it represents. And that is a, perhaps the first really astonishing aspect of the Nap Napta Playa Megalis. They match up uh, very well. In fact, our knowledge of uh, some of these six stars' distances, especially the further ones, the Orion Belt stars, is is not that good. We have a uh, sizably quoted uh, uh, standard error deviation in the in the in the locations of those. Within the standard error deviation of our knowledge of those, the, the fit is in fact very good. Brophy follows the clues to a greater and greater realization of a profoundly advanced knowledge of our universe from a time when traditional dating shows human civilization had yet to begin. If Brophy's interpretation is correct, it may signal a radical paradigm shift in our understanding of our ancient past. So, the uh, megalithic complex keeps begging analysis. Yeah. The ancient obsession with the stars takes its place among the many other misunderstood practices of these mysterious ancients, initially misunderstood as acts and works of primitive superstition. In almost every case, when advances in our own science raised our understanding to a sufficient level, we were forced into reclassification of these ancient practices, not as acts and works of primitive superstition, but instead as evidence of an extremely high degree of sophistication, development, and a deep knowledge of the innermost secrets of our universe.